Hey people, it's me Eco Chick, and I'm here with Mrs. Durant and Seymour and Snarky and Rowdy Frog and the Sack Fry. Yeah, Sack Fry are looking good. We did have a significant loss overnight. We lost five. Um, I sort of thought that was going to be happening with the ones that are laying on the bottom. Um, that is not typical behavior, and so. They must, you know, something is happening at this developmental stage for them. I'll give you a little peek into the cup of the ones that I extracted today from the tank. Um, there are still some laying on the bottom, so I predict that we'll probably lose a pr about five more or so tomorrow. It's just really natural. Don't get sad. It's what happens in nature and at the hatchery too and in our little tiny hatchery here uh, with Mrs. Durant. So. Yeah, so check out our little sack fry today. They are all over the place, as you can see. But what are you noticing about how they're moving? What do you notice about how they look today? What do you wonder about tank life and these little critters today? Any words you have for our little ones? You can think some positive thoughts to them. They need all the positives as they're getting ready to be released out into the big, big water and the big, big wild. It will be a little shocking on move out day. So yeah, just be thinking positive thoughts for our little ones. I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can get a closer look at them. See if you can spot all their fins. How much of their egg sac can you see now? What do their markings remind you of? All right. Let's get into water quality and temperature. So, water quality is not so horrible. Uh, the pH did come down a little and the ammonia is pretty stable at 0 0.25. I did change out about a third of the water today and I added 60 drops of pH down just to see if that would help out a little bit. Um, over here, our temperature is 53, of course, and the room is really warm. It's like 65. We had what's called an unseasonably warm day. An unseasonably warm day yesterday. So it was December 1st. It was almost 70 degrees here in Eugene, Oregon. It was bright blue, sunny skies, and that is not usual. And so, um, you know, that was a weather of one day, but over time, if you looked at all of the December 1st for a long, you know, many, many years, you would see a pattern of weather, and that is what is called the climate. So a pattern of weather, and patterns of weather right now are changing, and that is a symptom of what is called climate change. And so, it's something that, um, you know, all species are adapting to, and we as humans will need to do a little bit of adapting to. And so, yeah, it's just something that um, will change how things grow, and, and yeah, but there's a lot of hope and solution around that and things that we can do. And so, yeah, I'll get into more about salmon uh, help things that we can do in the next, you know, next week or so. So yeah, um, these little ones are looking super healthy and they aren't really caring about climate change right now. They're just going to go out and do their thing and do the best they can. And that's all we can hope for. So we're getting closer to the swim up fry stage. We're only about a hundred temperature units away now. So here's our data. We're down five, so we have about 89. It's our constant 53 degrees. 1,456 temperature units. Woohoo! 100 temperature units or so to go. A little less than that. 
pH is around 7.2 and the ammonia is 0 0.25. The water is cool and clear, but there were some visible floaties. That means like just little, probably, you know, poop and pee stuff from the, the little critters uh, and maybe even some of their egg casing still, who knows. But some stuff was floating, tiny bit, hardly visible, but I decided to change out some water. We had five ghosts. Egg sacs are hardly visible on the sides of most of them now, and they are having typical swimming behavior, except for the ones that are laying down on the bottom. Um, I noted that I changed a third of the water and put the 60 drops in. So, um, bringing them back over, I'm just gonna show you the bottom. So, you'll see they're just, look really tired and they're laying on the bottom they are breathing and um, if they don't get swimming around it's you know likely that they won't make it but most of them are doing just great there's just a few that are still exhibiting that tired behavior and sometimes they do go on to the bottom to just take a little rest and regroup it's kind of like us humans we need a break sometimes and then they get back at it and swim 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 away so yeah, they're looking pretty, pretty good. I think Snarky's doing a great job and Seymour is so grateful for their help. Um, now, just to take you into, see if I can get it, our cup of not so alive ones anymore. So yeah, again, I just find it interesting because I'm a science-minded person and they, you know, they look like maybe something was happening with their egg sacs. It's really remarkable how fast they start to break down once they, um, you know, die. And the thing about it that is important to note is that every, every part of the life cycle for the salmon is important for different predators. And so um, if these little ones were out in the wild, there would be some macro invertebrates that would be like yum, 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 yum. And um, yeah, and when the adult salmon come back and spawn and they're at the end of their life cycle, their dead carcasses or bodies actually give nutrients back to the ecosystem. They have found salmon DNA high up in trees and so that tells scientists that when creatures like bear or eagle or other animals that take the salmon away from the waterways the carcasses are you know given back to the environment and so the trees have roots that go down into the water in the riparian zones and the trees are soaking up that water that has the nutrients from the salmon adults that were spawned out. And so it's all this interconnected circle and all things give back. Um, it's just a really remarkable process that living things have. So yeah, um, I guess I, that's all I have for today. I'm, I just, I don't know. I'm kind of going to be lonely without these little ones and without making these videos for you. It's been really fun. And so yeah, a few more days, I predict like five or so, but we'll see. And when most of them are ready, that's when I'll have to do the release because the longer they're in the tank without a food source, the harder it becomes for them to survive in the tank life experience. So this is Eco Chick and the Sack Fry and all the crew signing out for today. Have a wonderful whatever you do.